Are you ready, Israel? Yes, Mary. How are the trousers? Just a minute. Huh? <laughs> Perfect. Listen, why the exercises? What, are you taking your dinner suit to the keep fit classes? <laughs> no, man, no. I just want to make sure they are all right when I go dancing. Well, what sort of a dance was that? Ah? Huh? It's the only one I know. The hokey cokey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Watch it. You put your left leg in, you put your left leg out. Knees bent, knees bent. Ra, ra, ra. Ah, very good. That's better than mine. All I know is the twist. And even then, I don't know what it is you're supposed to twist. Here, <laughs> uh, slip this on. Uh, look at that jacket. Uh, the shoulder's so straight and the back, perfect. Many. Uh, I know what you're going to say. Ah, you are perceptive, Israel. I can't put anything over on you. You've noticed. Huh? Just a loose thread on the lapel. There. It's perfect. <laughs> huh? well, uh, would you like it wrapped up or would you like to wear it? Just a minute, Manny. What? The sleeves. What's wrong with the sleeves? Where are they? What, something about the sleeves you don't like? They are short. Short? Sure. No, listen. Well, not for a dress suit. Uh, listen to me, Israel. You go to a function, you put on that lovely dress shirt your gorgeous wife bought you with the frilly lace cuffs and the beautiful golden cufflinks, huh? You want to hide all that behind a sleeve? Look, Manny, I don't mind showing my cufflinks, but I don't want to show my armbands. You're exaggerating. <laughs> Manny, you have made the sleeves too short. Uh, perhaps your arms have grown a bit? Look, I don't want to argue. I just want longer sleeves. Listen, you want longer sleeves, yeah. you'll get longer sleeves. Don't worry, yeah. I'll change it for you. Don't worry. It'll all be all right. In one week's time, it'll all be ready. Don't worry. Where is Patrick this morning? Ah, uh, I know where he isn't. He isn't at work. That's where he isn't. Huh? It's this. Yeah, see? Lunchtime, is he's not here yet. Well, perhaps he's not well. Perhaps he's in bed with a hangover. I gave him all afternoon off yesterday. He went to a wake. That's an Irish funeral. Yes, I've heard of all those Irish funerals. They are a bit wild. Wild? You know, I only went to one once. Never again. You know, they got that drunk, they could have buried anybody. <laughs> I, I was lucky to get away. Maybe they buried Patrick yesterday. Oh, I should be so lucky. Here, uh, Israel, tell me, would you like a glass of lemon tea before you go? Thanks, Manny, thank you. I got no time. As a matter of fact, I have to go to the station to meet the new rabbi and bring him to the shul. Oh, what? Uh, rabbi Levy is left already? Rabbi Levy flew to America this morning. Well, perhaps he'll be happier there. I thought he was very happy with us here. Well, you know, he did the right thing. It's, it's much more dynamic over there. There's more freedom. You know, Cousin Lionel, he writes that in a place called Las Vegas, they've opened a drive-in synagogue. Drive-in? <laughs> Oh, America, America. Israel, hey, just a minute. Before you go, Israel, uh, do me a favor. Now, would you give this letter to the new rabbi for me? Yes, man, yes. Don't worry about your jacket. It'll be all right. See you in shul tonight. I'll see you in shul tonight. Thank you, Israel. Three inches too short. Three inches too short. Change it. What sort of a time do you call this? <laughs> All right, Manny. All right, what's your excuse this time? Manny? You never believe it. I know that, but what is your excuse? <laughs> well, it was this way, Manny. I was delayed with the funeral. The funeral was yesterday. True, true. But you see, we develop complications. <laughs> I'd better sit down. I can see uh, this is going to be a long one. Well. It all started with the memorial service in the Red Lion. You had a memorial service in the Red Lion? <laughs> of course we had. I mean, that was where the dear departed spent most of his time and all of his money. <laughs> so we had a few jars, you know. And afterwards, we piled out into the funeral cars and headed off for the cemetery. Fair enough. But when we get there, sure, we haven't got the two O'Connell brothers with us and we have to go back for them. Well, what's so special about the O'Connell brothers? Well... It's this way, Manny, you see. Not only was Big Jim O'Connell a chief mourner, but his brother Kevin was the corpse. <laughs> you mean you left the corpse outside the pub? We well, did nothing as such, which he was inside in the saloon bar with Big Jim. <laughs> you took a coffin inside the Red Lion with you? I should hope we're not the kind of man would leave a man outside on his own. <laughs> I mean, especially poor Kevy, God rest his soul. He was a great one for the company. Go on. Go on. So, anyway, how? We're back there now, so what do we do? 
we have another memorial service. <laughs> well, by the time we was got ready to leave, we were so drunk none of us could drive. <laughs> the only sober one was Kevin the Corpse. So, <laughs> what were we to do? We took him, we put him downstairs in the cellar, next to the best bitter, and in the morning after I heard the dog, we took him off to the, ceremony, to the cemetery and buried him with great joy in his own grave. Incredible. You see, Manny, there's always a simple explanation for everything. Well, thank you. Well, now you explain that. Will you finish Mr. Howell's dinner suit? He's calling for it tonight. Manny, it should be done right away. As a matter of fact, I only have to give the trousers a bit of an old press. Fair's fair, me old son, but you ought to give me warning before you start wailing. I'm not wailing. I'm just rehearsing a Sabbath prayer. You don't mean to tell me we have to put up with that every Friday. Listen, if I am going to be appointed honorary cantor, I've got to practice. Wait a minute, you already have a cantor. Morris Silverman is the cantor. You never know what might happen to Morris Silverman. He could fall suddenly ill, God forbid. He could have an accident, God forbid. He might even... Lose his voice, God forbid. Have you tried sticking pins in a wax effigy? <laughs> Listen, one day the honour of being cantor will be mine, and I shall be ready. God forbid. <laughs> uh, Manny, Manny, no disparagement intended, but I don't think much of your hymn. What's wrong with it? Well, there's not much of a tune to it, is there? I mean, you want a good tune, you take, I'll sing a hymn to Mary. Sing a hymn to Mary. I'll sing a hymn to Mary, the mother of my God. Patrick, please. Our congregation is all for the spirit of ecumenicalism, but so far we haven't got round to singing about Mary. Ah, <laughs> what you're looking? I mean, you can juggle the words around to suit yourself. I'll sing a hymn to Moses. Patrick, <laughs> please. We're happy with what we've got. Right? <laughs> I'll sing a hymn. <laughs> Hey! I didn't know you were holding a service in here in the workroom. He's only practicing for the captor's job. Well, what happened to Morris Silverman? Don't tell me. His wife found out about Deirdre. Who's Deirdre? <laughs> Who's Deirdre? You didn't know? I thought everybody knew. He's got this secretary, Deirdre, a beautiful girl, mini skirts, legs up to here. <laughs> Takes her out to lunch every day. I oh, know, no. Honey swat ki molly pons. Patrick is right. Just because Morris Silverman has got a beautiful secretary and he takes her to lunch, people are always ready to think the worst. Plenty of men have got lovely secretaries. Plenty of men take their secretaries to lunch. So why jump to the conclusion that Morris is a dirty old man? She can't type. The dirty old man. <laughs> <laughs> so what does his wife do? Come on, tell me. She didn't do anything. Well, as far as I know, she, she hasn't found out yet. Then why are you rehearsing the prayers? Because I'm going to be singing it. Don't you know? You know we've got a new rabbi. And new rabbis are, are like new brooms. They sometimes sweep clean. You sound pretty confident. Listen, I am confident. Look, I wrote him a letter. This is what I wrote the rabbi. Listen to this. Dear rabbi, on behalf of your new congregation, welcome to Jackson Street Synagogue. If there is any way I can be of service to you, do not hesitate to call upon me. Uh, <clears throat> Of course, I would not presume to push myself forward for any office, even for that of Cantor, for which I am well qualified. After all, Morris Silverman does try to do his best. I look forward to seeing you this Sabbath Eve. Yours devoutly, Manny Cohen. P.S. As a practical donation, I should be happy to provide you with a free suit per annum. That is bribery. I call that... Incentive bonus. Bonus, bribery, you can call it what you like, Manny. You've got no chance of being the canter. Listen, Morris Silverman can't go on forever. You wouldn't say that if you saw him with Deirdre. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, if anything happens to Morris Silverman, I'll be the canter. You like Patrick? Luther says a canter. And why not? I've got a better voice than you. All right. Let's hear you sing, Loco Daddy. <laughs> it's Loco Dodi. Oh, well, give us a bar of your ability, guys, sir. Loco Dodi. He cries, Carlo. Oh, it's flat, flat, flat. We mean flat. I like to hear you do better. All right, listen. 
that's terrible. Patrick, you heard that. Who was the best? Well, of course, it's very difficult to choose. Yeah, Rabbi Stone will be able to choose. Listen, can you match the offer of a free suit per annum? I don't need to. Rabbi Stone is bound to choose me. Of course, not only have I got the better voice, he happens to be my cousin. <laughs> oh, what are you doing so early at the synagogue? I've come to see the rabbi. So have I. Creeper. Driver. <laughs> oh, man, Luther. You want to see the rabbi? He's busy now. He'll see you in a few minutes. Did you tell him his cousin was here? Of course. He was expecting you. He said he'll see you and Mr. Coyne. Manny, by the way, what about my dinner jacket? Don't worry, it'll be ready. Listen, work doesn't finish when I leave the workroom. That is the advantage of having a Christian for a partner. No matter how long it takes me to prepare for the Sabbath, I always have the satisfaction of knowing that Patrick is carrying on the business. <laughs> Come in. Good evening. Call for my dinner suit, Mr. Howard. Oh, she's all ready for your square. Would you like to slip on the trousers? No, no, I'm in a bit of a hurry. I'll just try the jacket. Oh, fair enough then. Lovely. There we are. Oh. Lovely day. Ah, oh, it's been beautiful. Ah. <laughs> That's not right, is it? What's wrong with it? Well, the sleeves, look, they're, they're much too long. <laughs> they look all right to me. <laughs> I'm not in the habit of walking around in this position all day. They're too long. Well, they keep your shirt cuffs clean. I don't want to argue. You just shorten the sleeves and I'll call for it first thing in the morning. Oh, I won't be ready tomorrow morning. Well, it better be. I've ordered this for a special occasion. If that's not ready first thing in the morning, you can keep it. I oh, know. Look, Mr. Howard, you ought to know this, you see. Mr. Cohen is the coat maker and it's the Jewish Sabbath. I don't care if it's the Jewish New Year. I want that tomorrow. But he's, al he's already gone to the synagogue. Well, get him out of the synagogue! <laughs> well, before I can get money out, I'll have to get myself in. Patrick, my old son, this will be the first time in the history of Jackson Street Synagogue that they'll have had an Irish Catholic in the congregation. Go in. Ah. Rabbi, there is still no sign of Moe Silverman. Oh, it's not like a canter to be late. He's usually here by now. Well, maybe he was held up in the traffic. Traffic? Did I say traffic? <laughs> yes, Israel, a canter driving on the Sabbath. Is this possible? <laughs> no, 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 Rabbi. I meant on the traffic way home from his work. So now he'll be late walking here to the shore. Yes, Israel. Send him in the moment he arrives. Yes, right. Oh, and ask my cousin and Mr. Cohen to come in now. Very good, Rob. I'm beginning to think I should never have left the rabbinical seminary. Come in. Ah. Shalom, cousin. Shalom to you, cousin. You must be Mr. Cohen. Ah, oh, pleased to meet you, Rabbi. Uh, call me Manny. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm glad you called because I wanted a word with you both about the position of cantor. Now, to be chosen as cantor is a very great honour. Very great. A privilege, cousin. I'm glad you both agree. Now then, cousin. Yes, cousin? I'm ashamed of you. Pardon? Do you think that I, a man of God, would give favours to his relatives? What about our Uncle Herman? He's got more relatives in his handbag factory than handbags. <laughs> Keep it in the family, he always says. He's even got it on his letterhead. This is the house of God, not a house of commerce. I'm sorry, cousin. I couldn't possibly consider you for the canter. Now, Mr. Cohen. Yes, Rabbi? <laughs> I read your letter with great interest. Great interest. And great disappointment. Oh, don't worry, Rabbi. Here, look. I know it all off by heart. <laughs> 
<laughs> How could you think that I would let you be our cantor just for a free suit every year? All right, Rabbi. A suit and an overcoat. <laughs> Mr. Cohen, I can't distribute religious honours for personal gain. I'm sorry, Mr. Cohen. I couldn't possibly consider you for the canter. That's all, gentlemen. Thank you, cousin. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Manny, what are we thanking him for? Luthus? Yes, Manny? Our congregation's in for a terrible shock. Shock? We've got a kosher rabbi. <laughs> yes, Papa, I know it's getting late. I can't start the service without the canter. Come, I'll show you to your seat. <coughs> Patrick, what are you doing here? Has many converted you? Oh, it doesn't be today. I'm too fond of me pork boys. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen Manny anywhere? I must find him. It's urgent. Manny is busy with the rabbi. Where? Where? In there. Oh, uh, right. Wait! What? You can't go in just like that. Put this on. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, would I make a nice looking Yiddish fella? <laughs> you look as Jewish as a box of matzes. <laughs> Anybody home? It is, I'd swear. It is. Man, he's prayer book. Hey, how's that a goes now? Lachododi, Likras, Kala, Beauty, Neshabas, Nakabala. You must be Rabbi Stone. Delighted to meet you, Cantor. Pardon? <laughs> I must confess, I was getting rather worried. Uh, uh, no, I, th I think I ought to explain. Oh, please, there's no need of explanations. It's enough that you're here. Uh, but but you, you see, think, I didn't uh, want anything to go wrong at my first service, especially since all my family are in the congregation. Uh, uh, Rabbi, there's something you must know. Yes, Cantor. You see, what... come in. Excuse me, Rabbi, I left my prayer book. Ah, Mr. Cohen, would you hold the Cantor onto his robes <laughs> and bring him through into the shul? Bring him Thank through into. So the... What's this? What? You a cantor? No, no, look, Manny, I came here looking for you. It was urgent, see? I come in here and I seen your prayer book. I picked it up and I started to sing to myself. No, please, she listen. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> you see? Why didn't you tell him who you were? Manny, I tried, but he was doing 19 to the dozen. A disgrace. A disgrace. M Manny, I'll go out there now and no, tell him. No, you can't do that. He's starting the service. You, you want to go in there and make a laughing stock of him in front of the whole shul, especially on his first day? You want to go in there and tell his father that the apple of his eye can't tell the difference between an Irish trouser maker and a Jewish wholesaler? <laughs> hey, but what, what, what are we going to do? Patrick, there's only one thing we can do. You're going to make history tonight. This is going to be the first synagogue in the world to have a Catholic cantor. <laughs> Come on. I never get away with it. Yes, of course you will. Shh, Patrick. Any minute now. Manny, me throat is dry. I can't sing. You must. Manny, I'm, ne I'm, I'm nervous. Manny, I, I, I've lost my voice. Well, you'd better find it now. Lachododi lekras kalau pina shabas na kabala. Lachododi lekras kalau pina. Thank goodness that's over. I, I, I thought I sang fairly well. You, you were terrible. You were flat. We'll never get away with it. We've already got away with it. But the rabbi's bound to find out sooner or later when he meets the real Murray Silverman. Uh, he's right, you know. The sooner I get over here, the better. Relax, Patrick. There's no possible chance of the rabbi ever meeting Murray Silverman. Israel's gone to look for him. Well, he'll have to get the queue. What queue? <laughs> the people looking for him. So far, there's his wife, two men from the Inland Revenue, and his pregnant secretary. <laughs> the poor man. No wonder he didn't feel like singing. So you see, <laughs> as far as the rabbi's concerned, after tonight, Patrick disappears and he's none the wiser. Hey, look at Manny. What about Mr. Howard's dinner jacket? What about his dinner jacket? Well, he said if it wasn't ready by the morning, he'd cancel the order. It'll be ready. <laughs> Working on the Sabbath. 
Who's working on the Sabbath? So how are you going to shorten the sleeves? But telepathy? Simple. Listen, Israel Bloom is a 40 regular with his sleeves three inches too short. Mr. Howarth is a 40 with his sleeves three inches too long. We'll swap labels. <laughs> yeah, clever old codger. Come on, let's go. <laughs> ah, gentlemen. Shakoya, congratulations, Rabbi. A lovely service. Okay. I was just leaving. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Silverman, may I congratulate you? Never have I heard such a melodious voice. Oh, thank you very much, Rabbi. Uh, thank you, Rabbi. Now, if you'll excuse us, we'll have to be going. Oh, you can't go yet. I want to discuss tomorrow's service with you. Tomorrow's service? Yes. You know, this has been a very eventful day for me. That makes two of us. I never thought that at my first appointment I'd have such an exceptional canter. B believe me, Rabbi, you don't know how exceptional he really is. <laughs> Manning, I, I think we ought to tell the rabbi. You got something to tell me? Uh, well, yes, rabbi. You see, it's like this. What, what I really wanted to tell you was that I'm not Morris Silverman. Oh, I see. Well, what does it matter? I'd still like you to be our cantor. No, you don't understand, rabbi. He doesn't belong to the shul. You're from another synagogue. <laughs> not exactly another synagogue. <laughs> well, what exactly is it? A, a Catholic church. <laughs> I wondered when you'd tell me that. Pardon? What, you know? Yes, it was what you did at the end of the service that made me suspicious. <laughs> what, what, what'd I do? Well, you genuflected and made the sign of the cross. Well, it, it's hard to break the habit of a lifetime, you know. So I asked Israel Bloom and he told me who you were. Big mouth. Uh, look, look, Rabbi, I, I, I am sorry. You see, we, we did it for the best. Well... I suppose there was no harm done, and you really were in very good voice. However, I do feel that a permanent Catholic cantor may raise a few eyebrows among our more conservative <laughs> members. I don't think Father Ignatius would be exactly chuffed either. Israel Bloom tells me that Mr. Silverman's indisposed. He will be when they catch him. <laughs> that means I shall have to appoint a new cantor. Uh, did you call me, cousin? <laughs> you were listening. I was passing. I've got very sensitive ears, as, as well as a beautiful voice. You've got a terrible voice! Hell, it's news talking, gravel throat. Gentlemen, throat. please remember this is the Sabbath. Now then, I have already decided who will be our new cantor, and I shall inform you of my decision tomorrow morning. <laughs> Patrick, what are the odds? Oh, six to four on, Manny. Evans losers. I'll have five Bobo looters. I don't trust the Poles. Hey, when will we know? Any minute now. Adon Olam Hashem Olach Beterem Kol Yetzir Nivra Le 